Robert Jones is an exciting player, the three-star recruit, the highest recruit ever for a DU program. There's the ball again. The tap's going to be won by New Mexico State. That's out of bounds. I think it's going to be Pioneer basketball to start it off. Finally, we're going to play basketball yeah, here. We had a little, little, little difficulty getting this thing going, but here we go. Murky's going to trigger it. Last game out, DU played at Pauley Pavilion, played the UCLA Bruins. They got out to an 11-0 hole, but then they battled back. So let's see what the start can be tonight. New Mexico State playing pressure man-to-man -man defense. A day Murky with the basketball up top. DU starts their motion. You can see right now, New Mexico State's going to pressure this young basketball team. Murky into the corner, Taylor Gatlin. Gatlin on the baseline, going to elevate. That's an air ball. Pulled down by C.J. Bobbin. I tell you what, the sophomore's been off to a little bit of a rough stop, start here. Played well at the opener against Colorado State, and since then, just seems like he's lost a little bit of confidence. O'Ray Cocheo with the ball down at the post. Tries to get back out. Going to kick it out to Rice. Now rotating the ball over. Queen's going to get a go from three. And listen, that's a spot that New Mexico State wants to succeed at. I think they shot about 22% last time out. Yeah, they have not shot it well from the three at all for the year. Meanwhile, Denver's defended well from the three. Their 27th nationally had taken away that shot. We'll see what they can do as they, Trevlin and Queen will be the number one offensive threat for New Mexico State. Ade Murphy's gonna let that one fly. That one's no good. Rebound goes, it will be off New Mexico State. Ore Coachea thought it was Aggie's ball, but it goes out of bounds. DU gets another chance. Well, again, you're seeing what New Mexico State uh, is capable of and why they've been so successful. I mean, they're, they're down in a stance and, and they're there to defend you. Nice shot from the baseline, but Jace Townsend comes up in. He's a little bit too strong. Back in transition. Queen thought about letting it go back up top. C.J. Bobbitt, that one off the rim, no good. Oro Cochea gets the rebound. Second chance opportunity. Ore Coche on the baseline, spins. Nice defense to cut him off by Robert Jones. Bobbitt's going to put this one up. That one off the rim, no good. Rebound goes to the Pioneers and Chase Townsend. It's good defensive possession by the Pioneers right there. Taylor Gatlin running the point. Pioneers down 3-0 early. 0 for 2 from the field so far. Make it 0 for 3. Steal here. Gatlin didn't pay attention to it, and Sean Buchanan glides in for the bucket. Young mistake, sophomore mistake. Yeah, and it's unfortunate because Denver's, we've seen this pattern with them so far this year, just slow starts. Yeah, I saw it last game against UCLA, 11 and nothing is what the Bruins got out to. Day Murky with the basketball into the lane, gonna elevate, take it too far hard off the rim. And it will go the way of the Aggies. But you know, that's okay right there. As long as he's putting pressure on the basket, you saw, even though you miss, that rebound doesn't come out long. There's no run outs with that versus, you know, these careless turnovers here just lead to easy baskets. Yeah, Sean Buchanan, and this is a senior laden team. All but one starter for the Aggies were seniors. Their normal starters are all seniors, and they have two out. Checking into the game, Roscoe Eastman, a freshman from Marietta, Georgia, and he has turned some heads early on. 5-0 Aggies with the basketball. Trevlin Queen, now Buchanan up top. Johnny McCants in the ball game, number 35, a big body who does some damage down low. Al Kernaz on him, back up top. Buchanan's gonna let that one go. Size advantage down low, but the Pioneers come up with the basketball. Eastman with the rock, he will press the pace. Murky elevates, that's the jump shot he needs to hit. When he comes over there with that vertical jump, that's what you need. Yeah, you're not gonna rise up there and contest that shot. And again, if he can get himself into the paint area there, boy, is he efficient. Confidence early for a day. Murky is a key. A give and go here for New Mexico State. They worked that perfectly as Jabari Rice slid in there on the baseline. Yeah, yesterday during the shoot around or the scouting report, that play right there was talked about a lot in Denver. Just didn't move with the basketball. When the ball's passed, you got to move in the direction of it, get yourself off of it, not get caught on that screen. Murky again over into the corner. It's going to be an offensive foul. Murky couldn't slow down. He had Eastman in the corner, but Pioneers again off to that slow start. Checking into the game for 
the Aggies is number 55, Sean Williams. A six foot, 175 pound junior from Little Rock, Arkansas. Rice kicks it to Queen. Over the corner to McCants. Queen cutting. Good defense there by the Pioneers. Jump to the ball. Jump to the ball. Trevlin Queen, the give and go. Jace Townsend with the defense. I think they made the call on the baseline for the Aggies. Yeah, one of the things noticeable here with, with New Mexico State is we see the ball going off. Looks like Jace Townsend there. So when you don't shoot it well, obviously you don't want to come in, in you know, take a lot of shots. You want to take good shots and give yourself a chance to rebound it. Shot, Three-point shot is no good. The Pioneer is trying to get the rebound. And the Aggies will show some token pressure. They did it the last game, about three-quarter court, usually not this early that they're showing it. 15.58 to go. The Pioneers with just a bucket so far, reminiscent of their start last game against UCLA. Back in a moment. Welcome back to Magnus Arena, New Mexico State with a 7-2 lead. Time for the champion windows. Look into the keys for tonight's game. Greg, what do you got for me? Well, we've already talked about one of them, and that is Denver's got to get off to a better start. I mean, again, this is something they've struggled with all year long. And, and when you have a young team, you don't want to play uphill all night long. And then the last thing is you got to take care of the basketball. Something they were a little bit better with, you know, again, at the yep. start, but then here as of late, those turnovers have kind of crept into to their offense. We've seen already one with Taylor Gatlin, which led to an easy basket, and, and Denver's just got to have to clean that up a little bit. Full court pressure by the Aggies to see what this young Pioneer team does with it. A day Murky's going to stop, pop, and bury it. Yeah, anytime again, he gets inside of that 15-foot area. Just very, very difficult. His vertical is so good, Greg. Nobody's going to block that basketball. Trevlin Queen on the outside, going to dribble over, give them a McCants. McCants back in Kernaz down. Holding his ground, good job doing that, but backed it down too low and just muscled it up and got it. Yeah, sometimes you do a good job defensively, it's just a better offense. You got to find out how much the officials are going to give, too, Greg. How many bumps down there low before they call something? You know, you've got a really experienced crew out here tonight. I yep. expect them to let them play a little bit. Absolutely. Eastman dribbles up into the corner. Woods is going to let it go. That one's going to be off the rim, no good. 9-4, back come the Aggies. Let's see Robert Jones get himself just a little bit closer. closer. Yeah, agreed. McCants with the basketball on the wing, going to go back up top to Treble and Queen. He's guarded by a Dame Murky. McCants looking for something to develop. Shot clock at 10. Kernaz gets back down. That shot no good. Still New Mexico State basketball. So the Pioneer is going to go some height here as Tristan Green Height and jumping abilities. Tristan Green comes in. Got to battle the boards down there a little bit, Greg. Yeah, and, and, and David Enziquese gets into the game. And last year we saw glimpses, you know, of, of how good he can be, in particular on the offensive end. Murky Garden Queen. He's going to spot up, shoot that jumper off the rim, no good. Eastman coming down with the rebound, and he's running. Doesn't have the numbers. Jace Towns now with the basketball. Stops, pops, got it. Right at the corner of the free throw line. You know, that all started with Eastman right there, just putting pressure on the defense. And they had to kind of suck in and allow Townsend trailing an open shot. Good ball movement by New Mexico State. Again, a senior-laden team that won 30 games just a year ago. And Coach Chris Jans thought they were going to be better this year before the injury bug hit. Again, back and down, and if you're going to make it that easy on McCants, you've got to get some help. If you do either that or you've got to make him catch the ball a little bit further away from the basket right there. He just was able to get it too deep, and when, when it's there, then you got to decide on a double team, and here's that careless mistake again. Yeah. So you're going to have a big-time showtime slam by McCants that makes it 13-6. All three turnovers are resulted in points. Back door, Tristan Green. So you saw this, the freshman make that mistake. Roscoe Eastman, but he came back with a nice assist, well, Greg. And again, because New Mexico State likes to get up and put a little bit of pressure on you, those back cuts are going to be open. Over to Queen. Murky on Queen. Back up top. Sean Williams, the entry pass. McCants has worked down low, so Green's going to body up a little bit more as Queen gets the basketball up top. Now McCants from the wing, going to put it up for three. Nothing but the bottom of the net. McCants has come in and tore it up. 
he really has. And it all started with an easy basket. And then you, you see this happen all the time with guys. All of a sudden, they may get a little confidence. The guy's shooting 27% from the three, goes out and knocks one down. The Aggies coming off a performance where they shot 22% against Washington State. They know they had to get back into it. Tristan Green turns the ball over. You got to shoot that when you're down that low. Back comes the Aggies. Dish over to the corner. Sean Williams is going to let it go. He hits the three, and Rodney Phillips has seen enough. 19-8, New Mexico State has built a big-time 11-point lead. Well, I know the Aggies wanted to make a statement coming in from three-point land because they just hadn't shot well. 29.2% from three-point three land all season long. And last week, last game, that is, against Washington State, just not very good. And I think Coach Phillips is sitting over there going, they haven't shot it well all year, and then tonight, they're gonna. this is going to be the night the ball's going in. Eastman had a tough goal, but so far gets it to Tristan Green. Now to a day Murky. Pioneers down 19 to 8. Murky's going to elevate. That one's going to be short. Back comes New Mexico State. And again, with this young basketball team, you've got to be patient. You have to be patient, and you have to find the guy you want to shoot the basketball. There, Murky being that guy, but I'd like to see you know, maybe a screen for him or something to see him just having to create from about 20 feet. Well, you see New Mexico State whip that ball around. Their ball movement is excellent. T.J. Bobbitt's going to take it in, get the hook shot, that's going to go. Yeah, you can't let a guy get from clear out there on the floor all the way to the basket without getting secondary defenders in his way. Eight-0 run by New Mexico State so far. No shot, they're going to wave it off and call the foul beforehand. That was close. You know, right now, New Mexico State is playing more energy, which, yeah. is, which is unusual because this Pioneer team, that's the one thing that they've done. They've played hard. Well, I think the one thing, too, is you play well against UCLA. You think that's going to carry over. We'll talk about that on the other side. Right now, it's 21-8 to 8 as New Mexico State is running their game. Welcome back to Magnus Arena. 21-8 to 8 right now as New Mexico State is all over the DU Pioneers. 12 paint points and 12 bench points so far. And you got to remember, New Mexico State also played at Washington State on Saturday, so they've been kind of on an extended trip here themselves. And when you have injuries, you know, sometimes it gives yourself a chance as a team to kind of bond. Bond and, a little bit. And, and, and again, their, their energy has been really, really good up to this point. Enzo Quazi pushes one up. He got off balance going up, shoots an air ball from two feet. Right now, the Pioneers are, are showing their youth. And they don't look great, right? Yeah, and Coach Phillips talked a lot about that in yesterday's practice. It's just those uncharacteristic shots that they sometimes get into, especially when they're in a little bit of a, a rut as they are right now. Williams is going to elevate. That one's off the rim, no good. Pioneers trying to chase it down, but New Mexico State's getting second opportunities. Right now, New Mexico State, over. yeah, they're just more physical right now. Well, they're doing, and you see it right there. Okay. As you said, physicality, they go inside of the paint. 23 to 8. Yeah, Aurora Coche there, I mean, he just, again, just used his physical ability to muscle himself right underneath the basket. And Gray, you talked about it, that it's a veteran crew, they're gonna let him play. Another turnover. Right now, the Pioneers are out of sync. Back over here, another wide open three by Sean Williams, that's gonna be missed. Townsend with the basketball. It's kind of helter-skelter right now. Towns is going to get a bucket. Needed that one bad. Yeah, Williams takes kind of an ill-advised shot there. And when you do that, especially in transition, it leads to a lot of runouts. And Chase Towns have made a pay for a bad shot. Pioneers need to get a break. Bob, it's going to put it up from way outside. That one barely catches iron. Joe Lanzi into the ball game. We saw him light it up for 20 points. One of the first games we televised against Utah Valley. Denver's got New Mexico State in the two bad shots here. Let's see if they can take advantage. Gatlin give a go to Alp Kernaz. Kernaz into the paint, going to hesitate. Gets it to go. Nice shot by Kernaz. It is, and I, and I sometimes think it's the basketball gods looking down and saying, if you take bad shots, we're going to make you pay at the you other end until you, you learn. Yeah. 23 to 12, 937 left in the opening half of play. New Mexico State off to that fast start. 
T.J. bobbing in the corner here, back up top to Rice. Rice is going to penetrate, shoved off a little bit, got away with it. Another three-pointer up, that one's going to be no good. Pioneers with the rebound, here comes Jace Townsend. Kick ball. Well, as physical as New Mexico State has been up to this point, I mean, you've got to be strong with the basketball yourself. Your cuts, your screens, every piece of your, your offense has to be done just a little bit tougher, a little bit stronger, as we see Kernatz right there muscling his way to the basket. Alb Kernaz with the basketball off the entry pass. Kernaz has that shot blocked. That one's going to remain with the Pioneers. You can see the size that New Mexico State has is giving the Pioneers a problem. Yeah, that length right now is bothering the young Pioneers. Well, every pass needs to have a little extra on it. Your shot has to have a little more arc. That doesn't have to have much more arc if he gets up there, though he left it short. Good shot by Murky, but short. Rice with the basketball on the wing, spins, gives off to McCants, who's made a big impact in this basketball game. Good job, Elf. Way to work, Elf. Dribbling outside, Rice thinking about the three, taking the three, and hitting the three. Jabari Rice, the six foot four, 180 pound sophomore, lighting it up. Lancey's got to get him to move a little bit. Let's see if he can make one off the bounce. Right there, he was just able to kind of get his feet set and line it Catch up and shoot, shoot it. Yeah. yeah. Got him. Got to get underneath him. Well, every game out is a learning experience for this young Pioneer team, Greg, as you know. The pressure defense by New Mexico State's making a difference here. Shot clock down to four, down to three. Kernaz is going to have to shoot it from outside. That's going to hit the rim, but again, good defense forced that. Cants with the basketball. The Pioneers trying to find any combination that will work right now. They can't seem to find it. There you go. There you go. Charge picked up as McCants will pick up the foul. Check that. It'll be William McNair will pick up the foul call. And that's what we saw Gatlin do a lot of last year. Put his nose right into contact. Back in a moment. Jake Pemberton and uh, Joey Buckets as well. Joe Rosga. You think Amigo would enjoy the contact tonight? I think so. He would never shy away. No. Pioneers again, right out of the timeout, turn the basketball over. And that's on Roscoe Eastman, who really has started out not turning the ball over. But that's, tonight having some problems. And they've got a mismatch right now, too, with Roscoe trying to guard. Another three-pointer put up right now, and Jabari Rice continues to put it up and cash in. You know, you come out of a timeout, you got to know who you have, and right there, Denver's just seemed a little bit confused in recognizing who they're responsible for defensively. Yeah, he's three of five from three-point land. Pioneers just look a little bit befuddled by what they've run into at buzzsaw time. Nice try drive by Jace Townsend, and you know, Great. That kind of drive is what they're going to have to learn by to try to get back into this game. Well, when a team's physical and they've got you playing a little bit further away from the basket, well, as, as, as we see Queen knocking down a three. Yeah, Trevlin Queen's knocked it down. And right now, they're 13-23 they're overall for field goals. In three-point land, they've just been on fire. They're 6-12, 50%. And they haven't hit like that all season long. No, they haven't shot the ball well at all, but tonight the ball's going in. Denver's got to figure it out. Right there is a good start by Townsend, but it's going to come down on this defensive end. You've got to match how physical the Aggies are playing. First three-pointer of the night for the Pioneers. That extends their streak. Uh, they're in the 400s on how many games in a row they've hit a three. Try to give you that number here in a moment. Townsend again feeling it. Townsend's got it again. Couple threes get you a little more confidence going. Yeah, that's the one nice thing about Eastman is he's, he's constantly putting pressure on the defense, getting the ball down the floor right there. New Mexico State was just slow finding Townsend. Inside, going to get that turn. That one's going to be no good, and Robert Jones is going to come up with a basketball. Is William McNair and Robert Brown put that last shot up. Townsend's going to go again. Heat check. Yeah, absolutely a heat check right there. Sometimes... Charge, so the Pioneers doing a few things right here. 
Well, the tempo's definitely picked up here, and I was just getting ready to say about Townsend, you see a few go in, and you think it's gonna continue. Just too quick of a shot, but again, nice job there by Murky, getting himself in the way there. Let's get back, so this is the 415th game straight that the Pioneers have hit a three. We've been here during that streak where it's been in danger a little bit. <laughs> There's been a couple games where it kind of came in yeah. the last five or six minutes, but always found a way. But now, Greg, 15 minutes, and it's been a quick moving first half. Now let's see if they can kind of settle down to a bit of a pace. It's been a little helter-skelter. They need, they need to find a good shot here, especially when the defense gets set. Right there's a good place to start getting that ball in the ends equation. Ore Coche is going to be whistled for the foul, his first. He had two last week against Washington State early. You know, the beautiful thing about these officials is they let these guys play only a total of five fouls right. in this game. And, and, and as a result, the, the game's moving. And again, when you look at these basketball teams, you're looking at a 30-win basketball team from a year ago who's missing two of their senior players, and they're still very senior-laden. Towns are going to shoot again. That one no good. Going to be swiped out by Enziquezi, but nobody home. Pioneers getting one shot, and that's it. Rice thought about letting it go. Dribbles in. Kicks off Toro Cochea. He's going to get the easy one down low. But you had a you had you had a bad closeout by Murky there on Rice. Rice able to get in, draws a defender, and drops it off for an easy basket. Pioneers starting to score a little bit more than they had. Into Quasi dribbling a lot, fade away here. That one's going to roll in. Well, he just has a touch around the basket, the ability to get the ball in the hole. 34-22, lead is 12. Williams with the basketball. He's going to take the pick. Lanzi on Rice. Buchanan's going to try driving in. Does so. It'll be a foul whistle, I believe, on Murky. It's on Eastman. Eastman. Eastman bodied up, yeah, there. Got Buchanan. As you can see right here. Yeah, yeah got it goes him with the reach, actually. By. That will be out of bounds, only uh, the Pioneers' second foul. You know, Denver's not in a bad position. Again, they've kind of withstood a slow start. If they could get this thing kind of in this six-point range. Yeah, single digits here. The halftime, I think, Coach Phillips would take. 4.17 to go in the opening half of play. 34-22, the Pioneers have climbed back into this by way of the three-point shot. McCants is going to let it go from three. This guy can't miss. Well, again, when a guy is shooting like that, you got to get up underneath him and make him put it on the ground. You just can't let him set his feet right there. In Zaquiz, he's not used to guarding in space. 7 of 14 from three-point land. Close to goaltending there, but it's a good block. Back the other way. Here comes Queen. Queen's going to dribble in and dish. That's going to be a turnover. Back comes a day murky. Frantic pace right now, 37-22. It's a 15-point lead for New Mexico State. Boy, a team coming in that wasn't buying a bucket is hitting all their threes. Joe Lanzi's going to gather and toss it. That's going to be a brick. I think Lanzi kind of felt like he needed to shoot the basketball right there and said probably been better off going right back to Anzaquazi with that ball. Orek Coachea going to get in there with a sky hook. Nice touch. Falls off the side of the rim. 3-11 to play in a 15-point lead. Pace has been very up. It has, and as a result, Anzaquazi's down there. He can't wait for a TV timeout. Pioneers shooting 40%. They're so not shooting horrible. But the other side of that is New Mexico State shooting 53% and another turnover. Yeah, Enziquezi was tired. And as a result, he gave up on it, moving on the screen. 37-22, 2.55 left in the opening half of play. It's all Agnes right now. Welcome back to Magnus Arena. The Pioneers withstood an early rush, got back into it with the three. Cut it to 12, right now it's 15. Couple bad shots. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and you know, you've got turnovers in the game, and then as Coach Phillips refers to, you got shot turnovers. Those are those uncharacteristic shots that your team takes, and it can lead to, to just easy runouts. And again, you're playing an experienced team, very senior laden. They know how to put pressure on the basketball Go, as well, Greg. Right? 247 left in this opening half of play. Effort is there for the Pioneers. The execution has not been. And give some credit to New Mexico State. I mean, they're hitting their three-point shots. Well, New Mexico State realizes how to play on the road, too. You don't see a lot of panic. Travel. Ore Coachea 
working in, and good job by the young man, Robert Jones. Well, and again, that's what that big body does. I mean, he can he can get in there and match some strength with strength. And again, just a freshman, Robert Jones. We're talking about a guy that's only played 10 college basketball games. Well, the learning curve is going to be steep for him on, on games like UCLA, New Mexico State. Yeah, he's got to grow up quick, too, for the Pioneers. Gatlin back into the game. He'll be running the point. Gives off to a day Murky. Murky gets the pick from Jones. Trying to go around it. Gathers, drives in, and gets it to go. That's the athleticism that he has. And that's the effort you need right there, too. you got to go put pressure on that basket. That time he was very strong with the basketball and determined to get to the rim. 37-24, 13-point lead. Murky's got eight. That one off the rim, no good. Pioneers with the basketball. New Mexico State's going to put it up, so if the Pioneers can counter here, perhaps they can get back into it. Townsend's going to let it go from three. That one off the front of the rim, no good. Don't know if he's quite set yet. No, and, and, and you don't give yourself a chance to rebound the basketball right there. There was no one on the backside when that shot was taken. And that's something you learn as a young player. When ball shot from the corner, position yourself on the backside. Williams is going to drive it in. He got Townsend off his feet. And a turnover here. Great defensive play by Anza Quazy getting his hands up. You know, as much as we talk about Denver's inexperience, right there's an example with Rice and what they miss with those seniors. Right. And Rice just a sophomore, yeah. but has a lot of skill, long and lanky. He really does. But what a, you know, wasn't a real good, well-advised play Chris to throw from the corner or from the top of the key clear to the corner there. Gatlin's gonna let this one go. Looks good, it is good. And maybe that's what gets him going right there. So you can see, you know, see a ball go in the basket, get, builds a little confidence. Coach Billups encouraging him. And, and the other thing too, when you're shooting that basketball close to the basket, you usually have pretty good defensive transition. Good balance going back. Rice with the basketball. Checking into the game is William McNair, 24 as well. Rice back up, he's gonna be open from three. That one's gonna be off, no good. I don't think that Coach James wanted that shot. Well, New Mexico State being short-handed here, and short-handed also, you, you kind of wonder a little bit about, you know, their bench is short over there. So can Denver keep putting pressure on them and maybe get themselves right back into this thing in the second half? Robert Jones looking for a shot, gets into the paint. Ade Murky's gonna take it, he's got it. So the Pioneers have whittled this down to a nine-point lead. This thing was about out of control. And now they need a stop right here. Here's your single digits right here. Really, really important defensive possession for the Pioneers. Closest since the 23 to 12. Bob is going to let this one go. That one's no good. And a day Murphy's going to fight for the basketball. And the Pioneers are going to get this thing to single digits. You know what? Not the best they could hope for, Greg. It really is. And again, it's that resiliency that the Pioneers have shown up to this point in the season, demonstrating here in the first half. Well, the Pioneers fighting back into this one at 37-28. We are at halftime. Welcome back to Magnus Arena. Beautiful night outside. A little chilly, only 15 days to Christmas. Got our shopping done? <laughs> Amazon, man. Amazon. Is that where I need to go? Yeah, that's where you need to go, man. You don't have to go out to stores. Can I borrow find the a, credit card? Find a picture and just order whatever. Okay. There you see head coach Rodney Phillips uh, got his team Back in this thing, a nine-point deficit. New Mexico State will have the basketball to start this second half. But we'll see if the Pioneers can take better care of the basketball. You know, the other thing, too, with New Mexico State, I mean, again, 7-16 from the three. But really, at the start of the game, it was them getting the basketball inside. And, and, and you kind of wonder, you know, guys sometimes want the game to come easy, and you're making a few of those shots from out there. You forget to get the ball back near the basket and take advantage of your size. And the size, speaking of that, ends quasi starting this half instead of Alp Kernas. New Mexico State again working it down low. Big man going up, and he's going to get that one to go. O'Reilly Co Coache is, uh, when he gets that low, it's hard to defend. Yeah, yeah, you can't let him catch the basketball that low. And I worry a little bit about Denver's matchup here with Inzaquazi in the game, having to guard Bobbitt in space. Yeah, keep your eye on that. Murky, jump shot. That one's going to be off the rim, no good. Pioneers try to get the rebound. It goes off to Rice. Queen's going to go baseline, has a step, puts it up, ill-advised. Here comes Murky. Pioneers had numbers, not anymore. Got to be talking. Queen was coming up from behind, and the big man's going to go up, and it's blocked. 
Robert Jones blocks it, but New Mexico State gets the lay in by Rice. Yeah, New Mexico State just outworking Denver right there on the block shot. And they're going to get Robert Jones right there. That was, yeah, he, he dipped his shoulder. Not right in the Aurora Coachea. I mean, he will catch that on a replay or not. But So he's asking for an explanation from the official, too. Here it is. There's the block. Nice job by Jones running the floor and keeping himself in the play. But then if you come back down here, we're not going to catch that. But again, Robert Jones just a little frustrated there, it appeared. And hey, those are the mistakes that cost you a possession of the basketball. It's a turnover. 41-28, the lead now 13, and Rice takes it on easy, a blow by there, and all of a sudden it's a 6-0 run. Back up to a 15-point lead. Yeah, Coach Phillips gonna get a timeout here. Three more non-conference games, all of them against, you know, you got Wyoming Air Force and Northern Colorado on the road, so. So, very good basketball teams. Very good. A day murky up top, gives to Jace Townsend. Down low, ends the He's going to get that to go, but he right now is out of sorts. Another air ball. Yeah, they came out of the timeout and tried to get a little bit of a two-man game going on the side there with Jace Townsend and Enzo Quasi, two of your better offensive players. Unfortunately for the Pioneers, just unable to capitalize. And here they go. This might be their best offense right now is transition. Bobbitt with the miss. Pioneers back out. Kernas trying to get inside to Enzo Quasi. He does so. 17.54 to play. It's a 15-point lead. The only offense has been a day murky. And now this one from three, that's going to be no good. Gatlin casts off, having a hard time getting into their offense. It looks like they're working hard to try to do so. Yeah, and, and, and Taylor just didn't jump up and shoot that basketball like it was going to go in. It was kind of let go, like, oh, okay, I hope this goes. Ore Koache is going to lead in, and Enzaquese is going to draw the foul. That's the first time he kind of leaned back in pretty good. Oh, and Enzaquese is starting to figure him out a little bit. Again, get yourself position down there, hold your position, and give yourself a chance to get run over. Just got to make sure those feet aren't inside that, that line underneath the basket. Ore Koachea picks up his second personal foul, and they were a better basketball team when he was in the game last week against Washington State. Had two quick ones early in the first half and, and didn't see any more action. Nice pick by the Pioneers, looking for an open shot. Ends a quasi at the top, gives off to Murky. Townsend elevates, got it. One of the best shooters on the team is Jace Townsend. Boy, what a difference a year makes with, with the, you know, him into his sophomore year. Right now, he's just playing. You can see that confidence that we talked about you know, with the Pioneers. The one thing, Greg, it seems like the Pioneers are working a lot harder for their points. Cannon's going to let go from three, and I think Towns is going to be whistled. He was pushing a little bit in the lower back. Yeah, Rice, Rice. Rice right there just outworked Townsend. You know what I mean, the, though? Does it, does it seem that they they have to work harder for their buckets? Well, they are, and again, you don't have that guy really to throw it to, you know, in the paint area. Enzaquese is the one guy that might give you a chance at scoring down low, but whenever that offense has to come 15 feet or out, and again, that's New Mexico State applying a little bit of pressure. It does. It gets difficult. Well, and they've known that right now until Townsend gets hot, the, the best threat that the Pioneers have is a day murky, and they're really bodying up on him. Okay, what a nice play there by Hans Equasi, getting his hands straight up in the air, avoiding the foul. Now the bigger man checks in, Johnny McCants. He came in in this opening half of play, and McCants was very strong. He hit a couple threes, and working down low, he scored 10 points. 16-31 left in this second half of play. Pioneers down, 43-30. Townsend going baseline. It's going to be whistled. There's going to be a foul on the Aggies. That's good to see out of Jace right there. Again, he's a very good three-point shooter. Sometimes with young players, they rely on that three a little bit too much and forget to put the ball on the floor and go at the basket right here, drawing a foul. Gatlin with the basketball. Pioneers trying to get into that offense and get settled here. 13 point cushion. Gatlin's going to let this one go. That one's going to be short. Everything seems to be a little short. He's going to be whistled for a foul there on a reach in. 
you know, as a guard, when you shoot that ball, the last thing I want to see them do is try to go rebound. But actually, I want to see them head and back defensively and, and, and get yourself positioned to get the ball stopped. When you, get, when you run down there, you lose balance defensively, and right there he was careless and, create, and, and fouled. Sean Williams with the basketball up top to Trevin and Queen. Queen can hit that three. Did so in the first half. And again, New Mexico State trying to get their presence felt with that as they get closer to their conference play. Greg, they just haven't hit it. They have tonight, however. Good defense by the Pioneers. A day Murphy's going to elevate and slam that one down. Pioneers got to get back, and they do. And that was going to be off McCants. Good hustle by the Pioneers. Yeah, and that's what I was talking about. Your lead guard getting back. Right there, it was Gatlin making the play he needed to. Good to see by a young team not celebrate too much and hustle on back. It forces a turnover to the Pioneers with the basketball. Joe Lanzi's checked in, as has Roscoe Eastman for the Pioneers. Let's we'll see if Eastman can settle down because he could be a playmaker. Full court pressure. Pioneers break it easily. Just some token pressure, Lanzi with the basketball. He's gonna try it in for the layup, and he did it nice and calm. Well, they did, and very well organized by the Pioneers. And... Roscoe right, Eastman go. thought he could get back there and turn it and get the steal, and just kind of collided with Rice. I like the thought process. Yeah, and I also like what Lanzi did right here. When you get pressured, attack pressure, Lanzi getting himself all the way to the basket for an easy layup. Eastman yep. with a second personal foul. Denver, once again, has got this thing down to nine. They need to take that next step now. The next TV timeout. Let's see if they can get it around that six, seven. Yeah. And you don't have to get it all at once. Nah, That's just, what they got to realize as well. Exactly. Just keep chipping. Eastman not backing down, giving some good defense. Around the pick is Sean Williams. That one's going to rattle out. Pioneers with a rebound. Here we go. Eastman just, and that is a careless turnover right there. Head coach Rodney Phillips is talking about it right there, about the spacing on the floor. What do they, what do they always say, be quick but don't hurry? And that's it, <laughs> but look at that. You have 14.53 left, you're within nine points. You get a bucket there with your in seven. Now you've turned the ball over. You know, when you're young, playing all the AAU ball these kids play, you get away with that. But as you get into the college game, possessions become so valuable, yes. you just can't give them away. You can't get them at the end of the game, the ones that you lost, they, you've got to value that basketball. And young teams, what usually happens? Turnover bugaboos. They had seven in the first half, which is right on their number. They're averaging about 14. Inside to McCants, and he just stuffs that home. Yeah, Denver very, very poor there, handling pick and roll. You, you, you've got to get a little help on that roll guy, just for a second, to allow him, who's responsible, whoever's responsible for him to get back into the play. Pioneers with the basketball, and again, the pressure from New Mexico State forces the Pioneers to start that offense out. Six seconds left on the shot clock. Eastman with the basketball up top to Lanzi. Lanzi knows he's got to let it go. He does. That one no good off the rim. Forced DU into a shot they had to take. That's something Eastman will learn to do as that shot clock's running down. Probably one of the best plays he can make is a penetrate and pitch play, get himself in the lane and see if he can find Lancey for that type of shot. It's going to be a foul on a Dave Murky, I believe. It's going to be a little hold. The Pioneers now with five team fouls. They're fouling a little more this, this half. Take a look at McCants inside in the pick and roll defense. Not existent there. Yeah, again, it appeared that yeah, it was into Quasi there that should have been back in a help position. Ore Coache inside, going to give off. New Mexico loses it. New Mexico State loses the handle, but the Aggies get it back. A little bit of dribbling display there by Buchanan. Shot clock down to five, and a great job by Eastman stripping that basketball. Give off to Lanzi. Jace Townsend from three. Got it. Lead down to eight at 45-37. Again, Towns, one of your best shooters. Yeah, and we've seen Eastman, you know, be really quick. Be quick, don't hurry. And you kind of have to live with a little bit of his carelessness. But right there, we saw it was good. Him getting Towns an easy shot. All of a sudden, now the momentum seems to be going in the Pioneers' favor. Travel call on Queen right here, but 
Check it out. Here's the steal, the play that started it. You see brilliant plays from Roscoe Eastman, like the turnovers. He kind of atones for it. Well, and I love how he gets himself on top of the defense. I mean, he's right on your heels, and you better turn around and get that ball stopped a little further out if he's going to make you pay. 45-37, the lead is just eight. Hasn't been that since the opening minutes at 16 to eight. And that's what you have to live with right there. That's a travel as well. Again, you're looking at the Pioneers' turnovers. Right now, New Mexico State has 11, as do the Pioneers. 45-37. Pioneers have a little bit of offense going with this group on the floor, Greg. Yeah, good, important possession here for the Pioneers. Get a good shot. See if you can find Townsend for an easy one. Eastman on the wing, gives it up top. Townsend thought about it, steps back up, can't get it off. Five high, five high. Now back to Eastman. Townsend dribbles in, he's got to shoot it, get some space. Oh, that went off the front of the rim, no good. Pioneers fighting for the basketball, and the Aggies come up with it. Yeah, clock gets late, and Townsend's forced into taking a tough shot. That's almost as good as the 24, you know, as having a shot clock violation, right? Because they've had, that's twice now in this half. That's two possessions. Oh. Ure Cochea down low. It's going to fake go up. Got it. I'll tell you what. Ure Cochea, when he gets you on that left side and where, where he can spin back with that right hand into the lane, much more effective than he is on the other side of that lane. You see the Pioneers really since that opening stanza where they played poorly, they played an even game since then, but they dug themselves that big hole. Lansy's going to let go from three. That one's going to be no good, but Robert Jones puts it back on the ground, and that's stolen. At least he got himself position on the backside there with a shot from the corner. New Mexico State going to tile it up from three. That one no good. The rebound comes to Jones. Jones to Eastman. Eastman's got to recognize, doesn't have numbers here, needs to pull it out. And he does. Get themselves organized. The one thing, Greg Glaring, that jumps out at me, and I like your comment on this, the big men just don't have enough experience right now for the Pioneers compared to New Mexico State. Yeah, watch right here with Jones. That's just a tough shot. Eastman's going to be called for the charge as he lowered that shoulder. That's his third personal foul. The Pioneers have six. Time for a break. He's gotten a little helter-skelter here, a little bit of ragged basketball, but nothing bad about that move inside, 47-37. Well, you know, the other thing, too, is the Summit League has lost a lot of good players. You know, John Conchar, no Mike Dom. Yep. I mean, you just think about some of the guys who have been in this league are no Dominated. longer there. And, you know, North Dakota State was picked to win this thing, but that's really just based on how they, you know, finished last year. Right. So I, I think that the league is just wide open, and, and I think that those standings right now are a little bit of a misnomer. Well, you don't know what you have yet because the teams haven't played each other. That's going to be a charge. Joe Lanzi picking that one up and kind of catching Sean Williams looking the other way. Yeah, and, and, and this is what you like to see. You want to get a little pressure on the basketball and speed them up a little bit. Get them a little bit out of control right there. As you see, Williams, again, no place to go, but when guys get pressured, the first thing that a lot of times they want to do is put the ball on the floor. They want to start dribbling. Well, get them sped up and get, be, get someone in front of them and get run over. Foul going to be on New Mexico State as Inzaquazi got tossed to the ground. And again, an experienced crew. Haven't shot a free throw yet in this game. How about no. that? The officials tonight, by the way, Kelly Pfeiffer, he's a great one. He just made that last call. Brian McAnally and Rob Kuhnerman. Done a good job so far. Pioneers have six fouls. New Mexico State, 14 fouls. Start to keep an eye on that as we're halfway through. A Murphy with the around the world off the window and down. Okay, they got it back to eight. Now you need that defensive possession right here. Queen's going to go baseline. He just beat Joe Lanzi and stuffed it down. Yeah, I, I, again, come on, Joe. You, you guys right-handed, you've got to take away oh, his baseline. dominant hand or his baseline right there. Make him go a different direction. Great feed inside, and Taylor Gatlin's going to miss that one. 
had positioning, but he was in the land of the tall trees. Queen gonna bust in it again. A block from behind by a Dame Murky who's doing just about everything tonight. Murky gonna elevate, jumper's gonna be short. Ends of Quasi tries to get the rebound. Pioneers can't seem to get off that eight to 10 number. I think McCants got a little bit surprised, or excuse me, McNair got surprised by, by Murky. Queen with a step back three, and that was nothing but the bottom of the net. Queen has taken over as he went baseline on Lanzi and now hit the three-pointer. And that's what he did last year in the WAC title game. 27 points, was the MVP of that WAC tournament. And he's just showing you why. Get, getting, into, getting into ball handlers. Another turnover off the inbounds pass, exactly what they cannot do. And again, you saw an eight-point lead just explode up after the turnover. Defensive mistakes, not taking care of the basketball. It's now up to 15, you had it down to eight. And that's again, you gotta come meet the basketball. I feel bad for Gatlin because he's he's a better basketball player than what he's playing right now. And he just he just seems to be in a little bit of a rut, just struggling. New Mexico State with a 7-0 run. They've hit five of their last seven field goals after the Pioneers cut it to eight. And Zaquazi on the baseline trying to deal. Goes up. That one's going to be short. Every shot of his is a tough shot. Yeah, he's hunting shots. That's what it appears right there. You know. I'm gonna, you know, I would tell him, hey, I'm going to give you a bounce. I'm going to give you one, maybe two bounces. But if you have to take more than that, kick the ball back get, out. Get the ball out, reposition yourself, and let's give you a chance again. Towns and stops. That one's going to hang on the rim and fall. So the Pioneers, after driving it to eight, have really gone cold, down 15. Well, right now, if Murky or Townsend don't score it, there's not much offense from the other three. Pioneers. Zero of their last four, one of their last eight. So they've cooled off from the field tremendously. Head coach Rodney Billups is trying to find somebody in there that can score and get him back in this. Queen's gonna let it go from three. That one's off the rim, no good. But the Aggies with the rebound. And you know, the other thing too that Coach Billups has done, and I like, is he's got Murky at the four, hoping maybe you can get a little bit of this right here. It's going to be a blocking foul going up for the shot. I think it should be two shots. And we're going to see our first free throws of the game. Yeah, how about that? 7.41 to play. We're going to have free throws. New Mexico State on a 7-0 run after the Pioneers cut it to eight. Pioneers left free throws when we come back. Welcome back to Magnus Arena. 54-39. New Mexico State with the lead. It was down to eight. Gone on a 7-0 run. And a day murky is one of the reasons why he has been a standout all season long. Yeah, and, and again, we've said this already in this game, but the lone senior and, and, and he's demonstrating, you know, experience right here. And just putting his head down, getting himself to the basket and doing what he does best. I mean, again, driving that ball. And again, it's that mid-range game that he is so, so good at. Take a look at his last four games. 18, 17, 15, 17. Tonight has 12, had a chance for 13. The first free throw, which comes with 7.41 to play, is no good. Neither one of them is any good. 0 for 2, and can't afford that. Yeah, 77% shooter. Buchanan's going to let it go. Check that, make that Williams. Sean Williams, that one rattles out. Denver's got one more run in him. Again, see if they can get that down below that 10-point area and, and how they handle. And again, this New Mexico State team, seven out of the last eight years have made the NCAA tournament. And Dave Murky's going to get the bucket and the foul, the hoop and the harm. But the competition level for this young team, you're learning sometimes it's tough to take those lumps. Well, it, again, it just continues to put pressure on the rim and when you do that good things happen and Denver's got to figure out a way to get a few more of those guys doing the same thing because right now Townsend and Murky have 32 of the 41 points well and you're gonna a day Murky in that conference in the Summit League he's got to score 25 
has the ability to do so. And I think what Denver's going to have to figure out is if, if we can't find more offensive production from, from some of these other guys. How are we going to get them open? Well, we got to slow things down. we we got to make sure that, you know, he touches the ball Absolutely. every time and down the that's floor. That's going to be – and when do you make that decision? When do you make that decision? As the Pioneers pick up another charge here, great by Alf Kernes. How do you make that decision, and when do you make that decision going forward? Well, again, you, you hope that these non-conference games start kind of defining your team, and, and right here we see Kern has doing a good job of maintaining position. We saw Inzaquazi do that earlier also, and it's a result of making guys catch the ball that far away from the basket. But getting back to your question, I think as the non-conference game, non-conference season kind of winds down here right. in a couple weeks, and you get into conference play, I think it's going to become important for Denver to kind of figure out, okay, how do we want to move forward as an identity offensively? Al Kern has thought about taking that three back up top to Townsend. 6.27 to play. The lead is 13. Townsend's going to go in. That shot's going to be blocked. Ore Koachea comes up with it. His length has been a problem. But A. Murphy with the steal is going to give it off to Eastman. Eastman's going to go in. Get the layup for the Piles, and again, it's down to an 11-point lead. And again, here's that possibility of, an, of a nice run for the Pioneers. Now, how are they going to handle it on the defensive end here? And that's Chris Jans has seen enough. He knows he's been in these type of games way too many times, and he understands that he's not going to let Denver get into that run. Basketball is going to get into the conference play. Good time to be at a DU Pioneer. Now, the students are on break, however. Back in 86, long time ago when I went here, we had that six-week break. I loved it. <laughs> you weren't up in the mountains, were you? <laughs> Every now and then. Yeah. Well, I understand they got a good snowfall up there, so skiing season is, is, is upon us. Foul by Robert Jones trying to be aggressive, and two things with that. Number one, it's a foul, but... New Mexico State's not the best free throw shooting yeah, team. He's so. got to show a lot earlier than that. I mean, and again, he's got to get right off that screener's hip and actually force that ball handler back towards, I think it was Roscoe there. Well, and the other point with that, too, Greg, is he's played 18 minutes and, and doesn't have any buckets at all. Ten, Part of that's who he's playing against. And, and 10 college games. I mean, Lane violation, I believe, on Ore Coachea. So a turnover in essence. You know, the Pioneers' defense, they forced 15 turnovers tonight. Whether you want to say forced them or not, but played enough to get that number, which is more than the Pioneers have with 13. Nobody can handle Murphy. Nobody can handle Murphy going to the rack. You keep putting pressure on the front of the rim. And when you do that, good things happen. They got to get more of those guys. Now with Murky, because of his athleticism, he has the ability to do this a little bit better than, you know, say someone like Eastman. But the idea is, is be aggressive, put pressure on the defense. And, and boy, I tell you what, Murky has done that extremely well tonight. Now can you settle down and hit a free throw? Missed his first three, one of four tonight. It's the only four free throws the Pioneers have taken. Like I mentioned earlier, 77% free throw shooter. So you expect him to make these. Second one's no good, but the Pioneers get a little bucket. Here's your eight point game right and here. Robert Jones. Here's your eight point game. Now let's see what kind of defensive possession the Pioneers can get. Coach Billups gonna put a little token pressure here. Yeah, and you said that DU had one more run in him. They do, and Robert Jones gets his first bucket. Trevlin Queen with the basketball. McCants outside the blocks. He's got it a little further out. Yeah, and Dem defense. Denver's in a bad matchup right here with Jones on Queen. And yep, that's where they go to it. Yep, there you go. That one escapes somehow, but Oro Corchea is right there. Yeah, they got caught. I don't know how, but Jones gets out there on, on Queen, and that's not where he belongs. And then all of a sudden, everything gets really confused behind him defensively, and you give up an easy basket. Looks like they almost had the opportunity to escape with that, but they didn't. Murphy's going to drive. Murphy's going to miss that one. Had a lot of steam going in. Again, back to 10. Got to get the ball stopped right here. Another steal right there. Robert Jones with the defense. Jones gives it up to Eastman. Now to Townsend. Townsend's going to have go. that slap. He's going to the line. There you go. Point. 
the one thing that Roscoe, he's bounded down. He gets that ball moving, doesn't he? He gets right on the defense's heels, and guys have figured out if I run, he'll get me the basketball. But what a good play by Jace Townsend right here, attacking the basket. You see a lot of times, especially with young players, they want to settle. They want to shoot that three instead of just driving it. Driving it's a lot more difficult. Let's see if Townsend can get these pair down. First free throw is up and good. Back down to a nine point lead. Boy, I know Murky's tired, but. Played a hell of a game. I don't know if I like him over there on that bench right now in a game where, maybe again, a, we got it back to. Maybe a minute blow. Yeah, I don't know, you got it back to eight. 30 maybe, seconds. Maybe a timeout to let him rest because you've got to have him in this game. You're, you're right here right now at a point where this thing's going to go either way. Towns has got 19 on the day. You know, right now it's kind of been a balanced game. You know, Dave Murphy's been the best player on the floor. You got to watch your matchups and bob it with Lansy here. Up, bad place. Ore Koachea powers up. Robert Jones did the great thing by getting his hands up, but he was too deep. Yeah. You, if you're going to guard the post, you got to start guarding the post before the ball gets in there. Townsend gives off to Jones. Jones, a little jumper. That's good. His fourth point of the game. Get a little confidence when you get a bucket. 58-50, very much of a defensive game. Pioneers with 13 turnovers. New Mexico State with 17. Again, going inside. Are they going to call Jones? Yeah, rightfully so. He's late trailing. When the ball moves, you have to move with it. It'll always put you in front of the post and it'll give you away coverage. 58-50, still 3.43 to go, back in a moment. Pioneers done a good job hanging in. It's as close as they've been since 16-8. Early in this game, they kind of got, got behind the eight ball early in this one, much like they did at UCLA. Fought back in both games. And that it just seems like that number of eight, that eight point. <laughs> I mean, how often have we seen that? Denver not able to get that thing or get the game below that. Right here. Yeah. A 59% free throw shooter, so. Yeah, Murky and Townsend have accomplished, uh, have accounted for, oh, that's a killer turnover right there. They're saying it's out of bounds off the Pioneers, and that gives them another shot. I don't know if we're able to see that again, but Kernaz goes at that ball with one hand. In, in the physical game like this, you, you've got to go get both hands on the basketball. Those are the little things that make a difference. Number one, that's going to take time off the clock, and it gives the Aggies another opportunity to score. Ore Koachea trying to back down. Getting in deep and doing so. Faking and going up, it makes it look easy. There's the two points you don't get because of the turnover and the two points they get. You can't start guarding a post after the ball's in there. You, you, you've got to do a much better job of defending and making him catch it a little bit further out on the floor. Well, Ore Koachea, he's seven to nine. All those shots have been within three feet. And again, the quick hands and Enzaquazi, just a sophomore, learning curve needs to steepen up quick. Yeah, and again, a lot of young players think that I'll get it back on the offensive end, and, and, and that's not where you get it back. You get it back on the defensive end. That's where you earn your stripes. Townsend hits the corner bucket. Townsend with his 21st point of the night. Can, de can Denver defend the post area? Lowest it's been all night at 60-53, courtesy of Jace Townsend. He's late. Ore Koachea again goes up, but the rebound goes to Rice over the back and gets it to go. And he gets the foul. Wow. I would take this replay here if I'm Coach Billups. And we would watch this play right here over and over and over again. Because you just got out work. Yep. That's all that is right there. You've got inside position. And that's just guys wanting the basketball a little bit more you than you do. You've got to put your backside into you've, it. You've got to go get it. And you can't get up and complain to anyone. Just look in the mirror because you had the inside position and you just allowed someone to just out-muscle you. Got to, you got to within seven before that bucket. And that all started because the other thing is, off that free throw miss, they had another opportunity. They sure did. 
Completes the three-point play, and he's done a great job. Jamari Rice in the starting lineup because of injury. Yeah, redshirt sophomore and, and, and a good-looking kid from, from the Houston area. Down, he's at 17 tonight, and he, he played well against Washington State in a loss on Saturday. Well, and this is where you wonder with the Mexico State and, and the fact that they've got three guys over there that are going to play a lot of minutes for this team in conference play. You know, does, does moments like this help Rice? Because if, if, if it were those three guys were, as we see the foul there, giving Townsend a chance, but if those three guys were available to play, does Rice get that experience? Right, and, but and, and I talked to Coach about that. You know, we talked to him about that. He said, you know, that may play out as the season goes on when we're in those battles to have that other experience, but he was pretty happy with how his team was coming into the year. Second free throw is up and good by Jace Townsend. It's an eight-point game again. We're seeing that a lot tonight. Another chance at a defensive stop right here. What can the Pioneers do? Jace Townsend and Day Murky have accounted for a lot of their points. Towns has now got 24. Into Kwesi. Wow. That's going to be a late foul. Yeah, that's into Kwesi right there. You, they ran a little pinch post play there, and, and he just offered no resistance whatsoever. I mean, watch right here. I mean, he's just standing. You got to get the basketball stopped. Absolutely. Well, Trevlin Queen, every time that it's gotten close, he's taken that ball to the bucket, or they've gone to Ore Coachea. to play, 10-point lead, so the Pioneers got to do something quick. Yeah, it's still too early to start firing threes. Keep putting keep putting pressure on that basket. Jace Townsend with 24 points. That's his career high. 22 is his career high, so he improved upon that. A day Murky going to go inside. He's going to be fouled. And, and that's good. And it's exactly what I'm talking about offensively. Don't start shooting threes here. Go, go Continue to go at the basket. You get yourself fouled. Clock stops. Make a couple here, and again, we're back to that number of eight. I would expect Denver probably to, to get back in that press. We've seen that diamond press from time to time tonight. Be interesting to see if they extend it because they've played it at the three-quarter court area most of the evening. Chase Towns in his fourth game with double figures and a day murky hits that one. 57 points and 41 have come from the duo of Dave Murky and Jace Townsend. Eastman Dean up, putting some pressure on. i tell you what, can he get up there and guard oh, the ball? Oh, look there what it resulted in. A Dave Murky coming down and slamming it down. That was odd, wasn't it? you got it? a six-point game right here. Now you got to have another stop. What a difference a Dave Murky and Jace Townsend have made in this game. Pioneers within six. Minute 35 to go, 34 seconds on the shot clock. It's going to be drilled off their foot, and the Pioneers with the basketball. You know, this is what we saw Gatlin do a year ago right here, put that kind of pressure on the ball. Eastman's just tremendous on the basketball, and that's what led to this play right here. All of a sudden, you've got New Mexico State on their heels like they've done to you most of the night. It's Denver defensively that's got this thing back to six. Opportunity for the Pioneers with the buck 26 to play. Down six. Gives off to Townsend. Townsend looking, getting a pick from up top. Now over to Eastman. Eastman's going to drive. The runner's going to go. It's going to go and the foul. No bucket for calling the charge. Wow. I wonder if they're going to give him the basket. Let's check it out again. Slid over late. Let's see what they're going to do here. You, you may be right. They may give him the basket and the offensive foul because 
the shot came before the foul did. That's what I'm. So you didn't count that. They're going to look at it and see that the ball was gone from his hands. Yeah, and, and I think right now, if I'm Coach Billups, what I'm really wa watching is ma just matchups. I want to get my best defensive team in there. And the other thing I'm talking to Tanzaquazi about is we got to guard the post. We can, we've got to get around in front. We've got to get around on the side. Just, again, don't let that ball get in so deep because right. that's where the basketball is going. Pioneers have battled back. They had a big deficit early. I think the biggest deficit of the game came at 32-14 at the 6:43 mark. They were down 18 points in this game. Well, that's the one thing that... that they had an 18-point lead at 32-14. You know, when you talk to the guys who have been on the road here with the Pioneers, the, the thing that's been so noticeable is they just continue to play hard. They continue to battle. And this was a game, again, it was like a 12, 13 point game. And I said, they got one more run left in them. And, and, they, and they have, they just kind of kept coming and kept coming and, and that's a good thing. I mean, that's, a, that's something that Coach Billups, no matter if this thing's a win or a loss, he can take with him and continue to right. build on. Well, and, and the way you've played in, in those film sessions of watching them get out hustled. Okay. No bucket. Because All right, there it is. Well, yeah. Outside of the arc, they called the charge, yeah. and yeah. despite the ball leaving his hand early. It, it's a player control, so they're yeah. not going to give you that. And but here comes Denver with, with the press. Let's see if they can force, a, force another turnover right here. He's out of bounds. Ooh. Oh, he called a timeout. Called a timeout prior. All these situations, Greg, in the, right here for the Pioneers are first-time experiences for this basketball team in a tightly contested battle. Here it is. Look from out of bounds. You're going to get the timeout as he was falling out of bounds. You know, that's questionable right there because remember the rule where if you were going out of bounds after a loose yes. ball, you couldn't get that yes. timeout. So, obviously. Because he's they, falling out of bounds here. Yeah. And he lost control of the ball when he called timeout. Kelly fight for such a good official down there. Big good question to ask him at the end. Because I think what he felt like is, you know, he was established in, but the replay show looked like he, he was, was going out. out. Yeah. yeah. But Win or a, lose, you, you've got a lot to build on from this. You really do. I mean, again, the freshman Eastman, I mean, he's he's been terrific here at times. A little careless with the basketball, but, but again, it's kind of hard to fault his effort. Well, he's, he's there. high speed. Yeah. First, you're going to learn to play under control at that speed as time goes on, Greg. Oh, and a blown coverage here. And a showtime slam. That will probably slam the door on any chances the Pioneers have. Murky's going to draw the foul, and that keeps the clock right at a minute. But pressure on the ball, but a veteran team comes up with the play and they hit the home run. Yeah, and if you came here and watched New Mexico State work out today, they practiced a lot of situations and this was one of them right here. They they had a good idea on what they wanted to do. This much time on the clock, how are we going to get the ball in? And they just took advantage of an inexperienced Pioneer team right there. Murky with his 20th point of the night to make it a seven point game and it may be a case of a little too late for the Pioneers, but a gallant effort. You know what? He, I mean, if he makes this, you got it. You got a two-possession game, actually, and still okay. Yeah, missed a couple free throws. That's going to be a foul on a Day Murky there, and Murky from the free throw line, four of nine. So he's left five points on the floor right there. Yeah, so uncharacteristic for him from the free throw line, like I mentioned. 77% career free throw shooter. This is five. And, and you're in a seven point game right now. How valuable are those? Yeah, you're going to have to start probably hunting a three here on this next possession. So maybe Eastman can get downhill and draw a defender and kick out for, for an open look.
this is where maybe, you know, sticking a smaller guy in for one of your bigger guys because then you get a matchup problem and, you know, maybe someone like Lanza getting into the game and having one of their big guys have to guard him. Right. Townsend trying to get the ball over and hoist up that three with 51 seconds left. Eight-point game now at 68-60. Yeah, I mean, if you get Lanza in for Kernaz or even ends a Quasi right here, you know, maybe you can get him a three. Got a senior-laden team for New Mexico State. Murphy's going to let it go from three. That was half the way down. It came back out. Foul shots coming up for New Mexico State here. It's a foul fest the last minute. Try to get the clock stopped. You know, that's the other thing about a day is he doesn't settle, you know, the, you know, for especially at that three-point line. And he's 7 of 15 coming to this game yeah. from the three. And oh, a two tonight, but... And 4-9 for the line, 8-16 overall. Had that jumper going today. Ore Coachea, that one no good. New Mexico State's had their problems for the foul line. As a team, I think they're shooting around 65%, Greg. Well, and again, Denver. Here you go. both. Pioneer still with an outside shot, 42 ticks to go. Townsend dribbles in. He's going to let the jumper go. Got it. But they'll concede that too. Yeah, now you got a foul right here. Right there, get him. There you go. 34 seconds left in a six point game. Pioneers forced to foul. 70% free throw shooter in Buchanan. First free throw is no good. So you see New Mexico State They've got to tighten some things up. Yeah, no. There's a reason you have the uh, an, an, yeah, an, another miss here and a three. You're right there. Second free throw is up. That one's good. Seven point game. New Mexico State's going to put a little bit of pressure on, but Towns is going to get it up. They got to go. Guarding the three point line, they're doing a great job of that. Towns has got to find a way to get it up. They're not going to let him. He's going to coast it up and put it in. From way outside, four-point range if they had it. Because they spend so much time together, and it appears that this unit, you know, they seem to get along. They, they, they seem to enjoy what it is they're, you know, trying to do here. Pioneers whistle for the foul. Two or three-tenths of a second come out. It'll be a double bonus now. Everything's two shots. Yeah. Been in that for a little bit here. After not having a foul shot until the seven minute mark. We've seen a few here as of yeah. late, haven't we? This is the, the old uh, adage, we were at about a minute, hour and 50 minute game and it could sure slow down in that final two minutes. Another missed free throw by New Mexico State. Well, you've put a little pressure on New Mexico State, and sometimes that basket gets a little bit smaller. 5 of 12 from the line, I believe. I don't know if they counted that last one, but 45% from the foul line. Pioneers are at 61%. That one's good. It's a five-point game. Got to hustle it up. Eastman with the basketball. To a day murky. There's going to be a foul there, and that's going to be on number 10, right? You don't want to do that. Clock stops, make two. You got a one position game here. Inzaquazi did a good job of getting his feet set and giving Murky a chance to try to turn that corner. And that's what happens. You get a big guy out. Trying to have him defend in space. Murky's just too quick. Murky's got to settle down for the foul line. These are big, got to get these. First one's up and good. You start questioning yourself because Going before that, you're four nine from the foul line. Yeah, and, and, and again, I like what Coach Phillips is doing right here. This is what I was talking about: getting a quicker lineup in, because you're most likely you got a foul, but you, you want to see if that quickness can maybe create a turnover. But the most important thing here right now is make sure you know who you're responsible for defensively. Free throws up a good by Murky. It's a three point game with 18 seconds to play. Do the same thing: get a foul, send him to the foul line. Pioneers get a turnover. 
I think they're going to give possession to Mexico State just yep. out of bounds. Really working for the turnover in that corner. I think it's going to New Mexico State's basketball. Yeah, know who you're guarding right here. Know who you're guarding. You've got to get an overplay. Watch the home run ball as well. Well, and, 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 and who's your safety? Who's your safety right here? And what I mean that who's who's the, who's going to be responsible for someone running out? Murky's pointing at Lansing, but Murky's figured out I'm the senior. I better make sure. Yeah. And if not, you got to get a foul right away. Time's ticking down. There's the foul. That's a smart foul by Eastman. <clears throat> what, DU's battling down to the last second, huh? No, they just kept playing. Yeah. Every time you thought that maybe the lead was getting just a little too far, and you really get down, when you get it down to eight points, they go on a 7-0 run, Greg. They, they, they just continued to keep playing, keep playing. It's just... Boy, I tell you what, is it, with a young basketball team, that's a that's a great sign. Chris Jans, the New Mexico State head coach, knew that this, was, this would be a battle because DU hadn't lost at home yet this year. He knows they're a young team, but he also knows they're well coached. Well, you know, in, in last time these two teams got together was in uh, the 2012-13 season. Denver's actually won four of the last six. That yeah, these teams thir have 13 and six overall yeah. is the series. This is the 20th game. We've had several people comment about that this is the most athletic team that they've seen at DU. Free throws up and good. That probably will do it. That was Stranger a big one. things have happened. Yep, that was a big one. Just 5 of 13 from the foul line. 6 of 14. 71, 72, 67, five point game. Seconds are going to tick off. Townsend trying to get the ball off. That one's going to be a turnover. Queen's going to get a little slam here. It's not going to count. Final count here is going to be 72, 67 in favor of New Mexico State, where the Pioneers did not make it easy on the Aggies. They just kept playing and unfortunately just ran out of time. Jace Townsend and Ade Murky put on a show for the Pioneers out of their 67 points. This two 